Hey, everybody, it's Christine Paracas, and we are back on Career Invincibility, and I can't tell you how excited I am. I'm bursting to bring on our next guest, who's going to be a bit of a change of pace for us, and I'm going to, um, I, I don't want to spend a lot of time introducing you, he's uh, introducing you to him and let him speak for himself, but he is my personal health and wellness uh, guru, mentor, and partner in my own well-being, and um, he has got some extraordinary gifts, ideas, and uh, training, experience, education, background, and two, more than two decades of bringing thousands of people to healing and thriving in their lives. And he sees hundreds of patients weekly with his team in chiropractic, acupuncture, movement therapy, yoga, Pilates, nutritional support, and integrative health coaching. And I know that he's even venturing into some more mind-blowing support and uh, modalities. So um, let me introduce you, without further ado, to Dr. Steve Gatro. Welcome, Steve. Well, or Dr. Thank you. Steve, wow. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm impressed. I've never heard uh, it summed up so well. <laughs> well, it's just the truth. I'm sorry. And we all call you Dr. Steve, so I will try to keep formalities here because it is appropriate. And um, But one of the things that's so wonderful about your practice and the work that you do is that I feel, and I know all your patients feel like we're in partnership together and it's really such an intimate relationship that we feel like we're very connected to you and it's an extraordinary gift that you give to people in your work. Oh, that's nice. Um, in fact, uh, you may, may have seen it or may not have seen it in my actual treatment room is my personal little mission statement. We have a mission statement for the business but my personal care mission statement has exactly that word, partnership. So if you hadn't seen that, of course, once again, you're brilliant, brilliantly connected to what I do. But if you had seen it, I appreciate you bringing it up. Well, it's the truth. And, yes, I did glimpse at it at some point over the years, <laughs> but um, yeah. it's just really the truth of it. So one of the things we love to talk about on this show, mm -hmm. uh, for people to understand the many trials and tribulations and zigs and zags that we all have to go through in life to reach and achieve any kind of success. And we talk a lot about, you know, business uh, success, failures, uh, you know, the navigation of that. But you bring something different to the conversation. And so let's talk a bit, if we can, about from your perspective, how does one achieve invincibility? The great goal. That's interesting. So uh, you're asking me in the context of not necessarily business, but talking about just personal the, the uh, health? That, yeah, and, the right. health, wellness, because yeah. I mean, it, it's all related, right? That's why I wanted to it's, bring you on this show, because it isn't, mm -hmm. a, you don't, we, we, we're talking about more than business here. Right, nice, okay. Um, well, it, it, it's exactly when you, for me in a small practice that I am, there is no, hard line between life and, and your business. And my invincibility is always for me has been consistency uh, and just uh, just a, a, a passion to the work. I have often said as far as building a practice, it's literally every patient encounters a brick in that wall. So it's not big swings. It's not swings for grand slams. It's literally doing exact, exactly the right thing at the right time for each patient at every moment. And in order to do that, I think that you have to cultivate uh, a personal skill uh, and it needs to be cultivated. I don't think it just happens to uh, train your mind really to stay. I know this is sort of uh, the buzzword these days, but it is sincere is to stay present with your work at all times. Well, and you know, let's face it in your line of work, mm -hmm. you see people right up against those bricks or bashed over the head with those bricks, right? I know I've been, to, uh, <laughs> I've walked in those doors with bringing a lot of stuff um, onto the table with me. And mm -hmm. it isn't just the, the physical, you know, overcoming back to back oh, hurricanes God, no. or, you know, back pain mm -hmm. from, you know, whatever the thing. And, um, you know, it's, it's how do we recognize and become present to what's happening and the impact it can have in all the areas mm -hmm. of our lives. Without question, I think you just nailed it. I mean, I've been in 
as you said in the intro, I've been in practice for over 20 years, and really it was, I'd guess, 10 years into it that it occurred to me that I wasn't really necessarily directly treating physical bodies. I was treating minds and people. And once that, in, you know, that insight happened for me, it's only become more and more clear, and that gets clearer each and every day. In fact, I hustled down here to get into my private sound studio here in my VW van in the parking lot, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I hustle away from a patient that, of course, Cindy books me right up to the edge, and he came in, and he's been a regular patient and doing quite well and really moving in the positive direction with his back, and of course, he was all blown up when he walked in today, right? So the work I did to get myself down here for you guys, uh, for him was as much mental and emotional. In fact, it was all mental and emotional, just reassuring him that his back probably wasn't quite ready for planks. You know, that's what was revealed in history that he, you know, and he was despondent when he came in. He, he just, here I am back to square one. I feel like giving up, um, like giving up, giving up. Um, and, um, you know, I'm in a position where, okay, I've got 25 minutes before I've got this call that I've been looking forward to. My expectation was he would be just as he'd been in, in pre previous sessions. And of course you get a curveball thrown to you, right? So, uh, hands on his back, but really mostly talking to his head and his heart to reassure him that he isn't back to square one. And paradoxically, uh, the fact that he's pushing himself to do planks even though it's set him back temporarily, is really the, the, this, the formula for his success ultimately. And I told him, I said, hey, you, you, I'd rather you do that and still have that intent and motivation to get stronger, even if it you know, sent, sets you back for a session or two, than to be in the frame of mind you were when we first met, which was he gave up. You know, So, yeah, it's... It's definitely more than physical bodies. It's, it's, it's minds and hearts. So I'm just having a major breakthrough here, and I'm going to just say it out loud. I haven't thought about it. It just came to me as you're talking. And, um, you know, one of the things that happens with chiropractors in general in the world, right, is that the whole mm -hmm. business model is about getting patients to come two or three days a week and for, it, forever, you know, because we're always right. dealing with new stresses in the body and so on. But, um, you know, I remember when we first met and you were shocked that I wanted to see you more than once in a week because I was in such acute pain and I was in a rapid need for, for healing. But, um, you know, now, five years later, I feel, um, I understand. Five years. Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know, right? Yeah. I'm still not healed, right? But that's the funny thing that was the breakthrough for me just now right. is I'm thinking to myself now and again, you know, like, oh, we're still revisiting this topic. And, um, you know, my knee or my hip or my back or whatever the thing is happening at the moment. But it's because I am constantly stretching in my life to achieve in the greater picture of my life and business and my relationships and everything. And, you know, for any of us, we separate the body from those things. And so I right. think to my, in my mind, when I go off into unconsciousness, I think, why am I not healing or why am I revisiting this with you? You know, why am I still seeing you uh, every single week and I would not want go a week without it? You know, that stuff is the unconscious thinking. But the truth of the matter is that we have to attend to this that naturally to keep stretching and mastering and building in the life, we're going to need to be bringing the body along. Is that fair to say? No, that's nice. It's it, what what you made me. Th so um, I just had an insight as you were saying that. It's really as if cool. we're, cool. Uh, yeah, uh, we tend to think of ourselves as sort of static, you know, entities. And and you're Christine, and I'm Steve, and we just kind of move through life as that person. But we're really processes. We're verbs. We're not nouns. And um, so revisiting situations or revisiting pains. Yeah, on the surface can be discouraging maybe, but it's all part of the growth. It's all part of moving forward. And, you know, the raw truth is that there is no life without pain. Our bodies are going to continually remind us uh, that um, they're here and we're carrying them along. But, um, but it's really more of a process. And in your case, 
um, we, you switched to swimming and really took that on vigorously and your shoulders, uh, told you so, <laughs> and, you know, we continue to <laughs> move you back and open up your shoulders and get you, get your mobility better. So you just keep pushing further on that swimming because you're not going to stay put. You're not just going to get to a point where this is good enough. I mean, I certainly know that's not the case with you and, uh, it's not the case with a lot of people, if, if we can remind them. Well, not the people you're attracting, right? Because you're always achieving right. excellence and new layers. And when you use the word revisiting, I would, I would challenge you to say, are we really revisiting or are we propelling mm-hmm. forward? And this is what that looks like. Nice. I'll go with that. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> Don't let me put words <laughs> in your mouth, right? No, I take it. I'm in. <laughs> but it, it's not the same knee pain. It just mm-hmm. appears mm-hmm. to be the same knee pain, right? Or the shoulder or whatever. Because life is not static, so can, neither can the body be. Exactly. Oh, no question about it. We're, you and I are different people from the beginning of this conversation if we really want to get into, um, you know, um, not mysticism. Esoteric. But, uh, <laughs> right? Esoteric, yeah. Metaphysics, that's the word. Um, yeah, we're literally changing instant by instant. And it's the its the craving to hang on to the same person and the same body that keeps us in a lot of uh, trouble. If we accept that uh, that change is happening all the time, you're right, it's propel, it's not revisit. I love that. Thank you. Well, and, you know, one of the things that I've always been a believer in, I think that we share, is the idea that um, people think of their bodies as separate. They want to grow their business. They want to grow, you know, make professional achievements that somehow the body's not connected to that. But I don't think you, you practice differently. Would you say? Oh yeah. I mean, so th- this is where we're going to have to uh, be uh, c- cognizant at the time because that's a huge conversation. Absolutely. I'll give you 10 uh, minutes to encapsulate all of that. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> Good practice. <laughs> no indeed um yeah it, it um it, it, rephrase that for me set me up again on on, on that one so i i can I, we're I don't talking really about our separating our professional <clears throat> achievements from the body as mm-hmm. though they're unrelated that's what people do yeah. before they walk in your door yeah absolutely and and um that comes a lot unfortunately i think from just the way our culture is set up in uh, business success is one thing physical you know fitness or let's just call it physical success is a separate thing and um there's they absolutely cannot be differentiated i mean is is business success really success if along the way <laughs> you've created a heart condition and high blood pressure and emotional distress that everyone in your path is now suffering because you've achieved quote unquote business success. Yeah. There, Most it, it, people think that, right? I know that. That's what I'm saying. It comes from, unfortunately it comes from just cultural conditioning. Um, so conversations like this are important to maybe change that narrative a bit. Well, is there an element there that we don't think it could be better or we haven't met the right healers or, mm. Um, we don't deserve, I mean, there's a lot of other stuff going on, mm. right? It's like mm-hmm. an indulgence uh, for some to walk into your door, mm-hmm. to come consistently or to mm-hmm. attend. So they will themselves through pain to keep going, to keep working, to keep doing. Yeah, you're right. Um, and, and it can come from a number of different places, but um yeah, I don't. I don't think it's an indulgence. Ultimately, especially if, if 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 I've if I'm successful in my communication with my patients, is that I've if it wasn't apparent to them prior to meeting me, is that I give them the awareness of exactly what we're talking about, 